Doesn't he have batteries in it? One, two, testing. Mike's not on. You're going to bring me a different one? Now it's working. It's on now. No, there it went off. Now it's on. I'm going to trade you. While we're waiting for that to happen, um, I still am in need of a couple people on Tuesday night at our Savior's to help with Grace's snack. As you know, we're no longer preparing a big meal. Now it's really loud. Okay. Well, anyway, we had our vacation Bible school this last week, and we had Jungle Jam. And so they were real big into, um, they would show the words up on the screen, because we do have that with emotions. So um, I'm planning to use it in worship for our rally day and see if we can get our members to do all the movement and dancing and that, and we'll have the kids show them how to do it. But good luck and best wishes for your VBS program. They are so important. Now, Clay left me a list of announcements. Um, 
I'm supposed to make sure I welcome our online congregation. We hope you enjoy this service today. A big welcome to Curtis Wilson of Moody Aviation. He's going to do the speaker preaching today. A little bit about him. He's been married to his wife for 35 years. Chris is her name. They have a son, Eli, who is 16. We enjoy living at our home in the woods of Cambridge, which is in southeast Ohio. And he joined Moody Aviation in June of 2023. The prior 22 years, he served with ministries such as ABWE Team and Child Beyond Helping to Create Sustainable Mission Fields Around the World Through Partnership Development. My wife and I came to know Christ as our Savior at the age of 36. Prior to being saved, we owned a foreign language interpreting and translation form in Columbus, Ohio. And thank you for being with us. And we do have coffee hour today, so you'll have an opportunity to talk with Curtis more. Our flowers today are in honor of Lynn and Terry. Is it Matthias? And the June birthdays. Again, we have coffee hour. Please remember to sign the red pews in the red folders, the pew pads. Then he left six blank, so that's dangerous. But anyway, we'll leave it blank, and since we're ready to start, why don't we begin with sharing the peace. The peace be with you. It's not asterisk, but I invite you to stand as you are able or in spirit for our gathering hymn number 532.
might as well stay standing because we're going to go into some prayers in a bit. But today's question is, how does God use civil aviation to share the gospel and bring the kingdom of heaven near? So you can reflect on that, and Curtis is going to help us understand that. I invite you to join me with a greeting statement and prayer. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As members of the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of generations, you work in us far more than we can ask or imagine. Bless the church you have called into being across time and space and move us to serve your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. God of field and forest, streams and seas, you are the fullness of all things. As grains of wheat grow upon the earth and fish swim in the waters, sustain and protect your creation. Lord, in your mercy. God beyond borders, you rule heaven and earth. Bless the work of humanitarians and peacekeepers Shield those who live, work, or serve in harm's way, and bring an end to war and conflict. Especially we pray for Curtis and the faithful ministries of Moody Aviation. Lord, in your mercy, God of healing, you open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living thing. Make whole any who are sick or suffering. Especially this day, we remember Chase, and Dan, and Demi, and Josh, and Doug, and Leland, and Patty, and Paul, and my sister Sandy, and all others we lift up before you now, either aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, God of grace, you root us and ground us in love as you inspired our ancestors in Ripon and surrounding communities. Also sustain us in new endeavors that your glory and loving kindness will continue to be shared. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will now have our readings. I can do that. Oh, it's got a big word in there. Our Old Testament is from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 42 to 44. A man came from Balshisha, bringing food from the first fruits to Elijah, the man of God. Twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. In our gospel reading for this Sunday, again, please stand as you are able, is from John chapter 6. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy who here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but, there, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there's a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in awe. In awe. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I! Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of our Lord. Christ. You may be seated, and we invite Maddie up with any children for the children's sermon.
Good morning. How are you guys today? Pretty good. How many of you have ever been on an airplane before? You have? You haven't? You haven't? Oh, that's on the ground. That's really cool. Oh, very nice. Yeah, EA, you're going to learn so much about planes over there. But if you haven't been on a plane, I want you to think about the experience. I want you to think about the anxiety, that feeling inside of you of worry that something's going to happen, or just the sheer thought of going through an experience you've never been through before. So last week, I took a bunch of high school students down to New Orleans for a national youth gathering. We ended up taking a plane down there, and I had one student that has never flown before. So this was going to be a brand new experience, and I can imagine how she was feeling. I'm going to be doing something I've never done before. And when I was sitting next to her on the plane, I was watching her leg tap, I was watching her hand shake, I was watching her lean back and just close her eyes. And I don't know what she was doing in that moment, but I want to believe that she was praying that she'll be okay. And I want you to think about any time that you are feeling that something is going to happen or you're just having this anxiety and this feeling that is, that is taking over your body. I want you to just stop and breathe Sit back like this student did and just pray to God because he is going to make everything okay. And she was okay. As soon as we got in the air, she had this sense of relief. And it was because God was with her that whole time. I want you to think about that when you're feeling that way as well. We're going to learn about planes today and learn about whole new stories with a sermon that's coming up. And I just want you to think about how you would feel in that moment. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you, for, thank you for you who takes care of us in times of worry. Amen. Good morning, everybody. First, I just wanted to say thank you for inviting us, uh, inviting all of the ministries that participate in EAA every year. Uh, it's such a pleasure for us to come out and share with you all uh, what God has us doing with our ministry work and a little bit about how maybe you all can get involved in that ministry work as well. Uh, as Maddie said, I am here also to talk about Moody Aviation, and if I can work this thing correctly, maybe, here, maybe we'll turn it on, see if that works. If not, we're flexible. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, how, how many people have heard of missionary aviation before? I mean, it's not unusual, especially where you all live here. I mean, obviously, with Oshkosh, you're surrounded by aviation at least once a year. Uh, but missionary aviation, I'll challenge you, is a little bit different than normal airports that you go to, normal flights that you may take to New Orleans. Uh, missionary aviation is a very special place uh, where God has raised people up to serve. And we just simply like to say aviation is a tool that we use to get the gospel to the furthest reaches of the world. Moody Aviation is all about equipping the next generation of missionary aviators. And in our case, that means pilots and pilot mechanics. Uh, we are a school in Spokane, Washington, that is a five-year program. So we offer a Bachelor of Science in Missionary Aviation that equips students to become either a flight, a pilot, or a pilot mechanic. 
Uh, all of our schooling is based around the gospel, as you'll see here in a little bit. The reason missionary aviation is so important these days, as you'll see in these three points, uh, currently in soon, in the next six years, yeah, we are in 2024, there will be one billion people in this world that does not have access to their community by an all-weather road, meaning there are seasons that the roads can't be used, or there are weather conditions in which their roads can't be used, or they have no roads at all. So that's one billion people that the only way they have access is by other means other than a road. Also, missionary aviators are retiring at a risk at, at a rate that we can't keep up with with our current student population. Uh, and we're not the only training program out there for missionary pilots and mechanics. Uh, right now, for every five missionary aviators that are retiring, we're only putting two in the field. So not even half. And then also, we've interviewed most of the mission agencies around the world that use aviation for part of their ministry. And they will tell you that they have more need then we have pilots. Many of the mission fields have the planes and they're sitting on runways. They just don't have the pilots to fly them. This is a little video about Indonesia. Hi, we're in beautiful Estro now. Video. We ride by a flow plane. In fact, that's the only way into this beautiful village. It's a gorgeous area, huge lakes everywhere. It's all just surrounded by mountains and very jagged rocks that go up, you know, like about four or five hundred feet, and then come right back down. Masyarakat di Estrut Namba hanya bisa sampai di kota dengan cara mendayung kurang lebih satu hari dan kemudian jalan kaki selama dua hari dan naik kapal satu hari sampai di kota Kaimana. Over the last few years, MAF has had the opportunity to partner with a organization called the Bali Mission Center. And a couple of years ago, they approached us and asked us if we could help them reach a tribe that was essentially unreached. Previous attempts to reach out to these people have been either stalled or completely failed. The terrain is so rugged there that there was no possibility to build an airstrip at all. I really felt like God tugging on my heart, like, what can we do as MAF? And all of a sudden it occurred to me like, wait a minute, we have an amphibious caravan. So a couple years ago, we did the first flight into there, and uh, they were very, very primitive, very remote. There wasn't any buildings with aluminum roofing, everything was just down from grass. Only a couple men stood on that beach. The women and the children just ran away in the forest, and it took two or three flights before some women and children came out of the bush. Bali Mission Center sent initially a team, a doctor and some helpers, a missionary, an evangelist. So we were able to provide the transportation. They had the personnel who were able to live there and, and stay there for months at a time and interact with those people. So it's a really great relationship. Nama saya Roland. Saya seorang dokter dan juga seorang staff dari Bali Vision Center. Kami membangun dengan beberapa aspek secara rohani, secara medis, kemudian melalui pendidikan. In the time that we've been serving them, a small school has been built, a church building has been built. There's even children that are learning to read now that just a couple of years before were illiterate. Melihat banyak perubahan yang terjadi dengan masyarakat, baik secara rohani maupun secara jasmani, hampir 90% mereka sudah menerima Tuhan Yesus, mereka sudah lebih sehat, anak-anak juga bisa punya gizi lebih baik, itu perubahan yang sangat besar terjadi di sini. Kami juga membantu mereka belajar untuk bekerja keuangan mereka dengan cara menjual kayu masohi, dan juga bisa membangun mereka sebagai sebuah masyarakat yang bisa hidup lebih baik daripada sebelumnya. Kami sangat senang dengan Mark, walaupun 
di sini cukup banyak tantangan yang kami alami berharap dengan terus ada di sini melayani masyarakat mereka akan lebih baik dari hari ke hari so you may ask why am I showing a mission aviation fellowship video um, as I explained earlier we are the training arm for the pilots and the mechanics and so once graduation happens they go to serve with mission agencies like MAF around the world and in communities like this and you can see with this village that they went to a plane and a pilot is a lifeline for that community they offer so much just simply because a plane can now come there uh, and not every situation is obviously via a float plane some villages have to build a runway before our planes can come in maybe a helicopter can come and visit but oftentimes villages spend years developing a, a runway just so a plane can come in and provide food can provide a doctor can provide education but most of all can, that can ferry those missionaries in and out that work with the villagers learn the language translate a Bible into their language for the first time ever so a little bit about the Moody Aviation program uh, like I said earlier we are a five-year program and this is a breakdown of our uh, of the years our first entire year is all biblical studies for our students because we understand that if you don't have that foundation if you don't have a solid biblical foundation before you go to the mission field, you'll never last on, in the mission field without it, especially in the places where our students are gonna go serve, uh, very remote uh, areas around the world with very little interaction with the outside world. Second year, all of our students get their, what we call A&P uh, license, and that is your basic maintenance certification. So even our pilots, that aren't taking the maintenance track get this again just simply because of the remote areas that they're going to be uh, working in and serving in uh, if they're out landing on the water and something happens to their plane they either need to know how to fix it or they need to know what to tell the maintenance tech when they call back in so halfway almost halfway through that third year is when they decide whether they're going the pilot track or they're going the maintenance track and then that's where they serve the rest of their uh, the remainder of their five years it's a very intensive program uh, I, I like to say it's our two and a half years of flight at the end is what most colleges do in five years so our students get very little time off maybe two months a year maybe uh, in between semesters and this is a a difficult slide to read and I'll just pass over it it's just a cost comparison per segment uh, this is one of the things we like to show parents uh, when they're talking about bringing their kids to Moody Aviation this is a breakdown of the value of the cost of the program uh, Moody Aviation's uh, pilot track is about hundred and eighty thousand dollars for the five-year program uh, which is the orange bar reflected in the orange bar and the other the other charts are other programs some other Christian flight schools and some other uh, private and public sector uh, colleges as well so you can see Moody Aviation's well below most as far as cost goes the light blue line is how many flight hours your students get um, Moody Aviation is well above in the number of flight hours and again it's something that's very mission critical for us to prepare our students for the mission field and that little purple line down there and you can see only one other school I believe in the group that we surveyed offers any and these are high performance hours so as students learn how to fly and get their private pilot's license usually they're learning on a very small basic Cessna we do our private pilots on a 172 Cessna we have any pilots in the room or any okay so you know what I'm talking about you probably know more than me um, so they start on the 172s and they get their private pilot license in those 
but then we bump them up to 180 Cessna 185s, 182s, we have some 205s as well, and they get a high performance rating for those. And there's also some what we call tail dragger experience, again, just aviation language, which is very important because when they go to the mission field, they're typically flying much bigger planes than what they're certifying on. Uh, to get their private pilot's license. So even the one that you saw, the, the float plane that you saw MAF flying would be much larger than the 172s that they get their privates on. So many, many more high performance hours, which again, helps that transition into the ministry field a lot quicker. So one of the things we know as a program as a school that's training future missionaries is most mission agencies don't want you to have any debt before you go to the mission field and that actually that used to be standard and you used to not be able to have any debt before you went now most mission agencies allow a little bit of debt so as I mentioned earlier our flight program cost 180,000 our maintenance program is right around 125,000 for the five total for the five years. Uh, so we knew as a ministry that there's no way that our graduates are ever going to get to the mission field if they have $180,000 worth of student debt, loan debt. So we created some different scholarships and then we've had some ministry partners contribute into those scholarships. But 10 years ago, we were able to give out $200,000 in student scholarships. Um, and then by God's grace and God's blessing this, these past two years, we've given out a little over a million and a quarter each year for the last two years to our students. And we have about 120 students in the program. And then hopefully our goal is in 10 years to be able to give out $4 million of scholarships every single year which would cover, uh, even with some growth in the student population, every student in the program. One of the things, we, had a, a, we have a ministry partner that's very focused on aviation, very focused on uh, education and aviation, and he came up with this idea of starting what we call the FLAPS Student Loan and FLAP stands for Forgivable Loan Assistance Program for Students. I know we're kind of quirky using an aviation term there. But the FLAPS program basically is what it is if a student qualifies, and the majority of our students qualify for the FLAPS loan. They get their tuition covered while they're in school. As soon as they graduate, they have two years to onboard with a mission agency, which is kind of the industry standard, because they have to build their support network up, they have to do any additional training uh, that they need to do before they go to the field. Once that two year transition is up, then that loan becomes due, just like a standard traditional student interest bearing loan. And what makes the FLAPS unique is, once that student goes to the mission field, Every month that payment on that student loan is due, if they're in the mission field, that student loan gets credited fully. That payment is credited in full. So literally our students who receive a FLAP scholarship can serve off their loan by being in the mission field. Oh, there's more there than I thought. So this is a little overview on the school itself and why we exist. You know that missionaries serve out in these remote locations, but have you ever thought about how a missionary gets to where they're going? The answer to that is the missionary aviation specialist. That is the link for the missionary to the outside world and to those vital supplies that they need. Jason Schwab, and I serve with New Tribes Mission. I flew in the Philippines. The region that I was working on is uh, an island region, and the typhoon took out a lot of the boats. And so we repositioned one of our helicopters and some of our airplanes. Some of the bigger organizations were over in the eastern Philippines meeting those major needs, but there were still 
the smaller places that were overlooked that we were able to fill that niche and, and meet an immediate need. We train people to be missionary pilots, to be bush pilots in foreign countries to humanitarian aid or missions organizations to do relief work with the tool of aviation. A lot of missions organizations who want and are looking for pilots coming out of Moody send pilots of their own that have been in the mission field and are experienced back to Moody to teach the younger generation. Having someone on loan really helps because I've been overseas and I've seen what it's like to work in the remote province of a developing country. I have to buy my own fuel, I have to maintain my hangar, I have to maintain my airplane. I was a single pilot program, so I really had to be a jack of all trades to keep the, the program going there. There are many places that can teach you to fly, but because of that day one attitude that you're going to be overseas, responsible for this uh, airplane and serving missions, Moody does an excellent job. It's a very, very small subset of the aviation community in the United States that would be able to qualify for the type of person we're looking for. And Moody is very instrumental in turning out that kind of a person. An instructor here at Moody Aviation, whether they're hired by Moody or whether they're serving us on loan from one of their mission organizations, they feel the responsibility to train up missionaries. And you don't just train missionaries technical skills, you train them heart skills. My job is more than just teaching them how to fly, it's teaching what it means to be a missionary pilot. And there's a lot involved, and it has more to do with your walk with Christ uh, than anything else. It's a five-year program from Bible school through two years of maintenance and mechanics to two years of flight training. My name is Zach Merkling. I'm a first-year Moody Aviation student, and I'm from Spokane, Washington. As of now, I'm just finishing up a lot of my biblical classes because going on to the mission field, if you're going to be a missionary, you, sh you should have a, a good grasp of biblical knowledge. The flying it doesn't happen until the fourth year, and sometimes it's a little bit of a deal-breaker for some of my peers that have dropped out, but I think it's really good because um, first you get a solid grounding in your biblical knowledge, and then you get the maintenance part, um, so you learn how to take care of your planes before you fly them, and then you get to fly them, and you're doing basically all three of those combined at the same time during fourth and fifth year. My name is Alfred Olsen. I'm from uh, Sweden. I grew up as a missionary kid in Nepal, where my dad worked as a, as a surgeon, so it's always been in my life. The Democratic Republic of Congo has had just been on my mind. It's a long time till I get to go out and actually do it, so we'll see where the needs are. For years two and three, the students are here at the AMT hangar. Whether you're a flight major or a maintenance major, a student is going to spend those two years earning their AMP certificate. Um, and that basically qualifies them to do basic maintenance and troubleshooting on general aircraft. My name's Dusty Williams. I'm a third year uh, maintenance specialist. The reason I came to Moody was I wanted a Bible school where I could learn and develop my faith and also get the technical side. It really takes a lot of dedication and commitment. It's a great program and it's intense, so you have to be prepared mentally and physically to come and enjoy the work. After that, the student will choose either a flight or a maintenance major and begin to work through curriculum in an advanced setting for maintenance. I made a decision to um, become a maintenance specialist because I really felt that that's the way that God had gifted me. And um, I wanted to have that, that training so that when I got to the field, I could um, serve the pilots in the best way possible. As a fourth year student, we are learning to do the major sheet metal repair so that when we're on the field and an aircraft um, has a crack from landing on rough strips or maybe is damaged in a small accident that we can repair it and get it back onto the flight line as quickly as possible. If they're a flight major, the student will begin by working to earn their private pilot certificate and after that begin to transition to some high performance and complex aircraft and then work also towards earning their instrument rating and their commercial rating by the time they graduate their fifth year. Every year builds up and by the, the last two years it is a very, very demanding program. It's beginning the transition into larger aircraft, uh, high performance and complex airplanes, which are the ones that we use on the missions field. I'm a fifth year flight student. This semester we're working through instrument training 
and immediately following the completion of that course, we will be uh, transitioning into the last uh, month or so of commercial training with, in which we would graduate in May with a uh, commercial pilot certificate with an instrument rating. Moody is unique in the sense that they allow uh, training into marginal airstrips in which maybe some other uh, smaller schools or schools that are geared towards missionary aviation maybe don't allow. And so flying the airplanes that we are most likely to fly overseas, training in areas which we are most likely to fly in overseas, it is exciting to, to learn what the missions are teaching so that there's really a seamless transition between training and real world. My name is Eleanor Hansen and I'm in the fifth year of the flight training here at Moody. In flight, they stretch you to a whole nother level. They really do make sure you have a wide range of knowledge, not only in maintenance skills, but flight skills. And then they um, send you through uh, basic life support and wilderness advanced training. So they really do want you to be well-rounded and prepared. I would love to be a part of an organization and help that organization and missionaries by supporting them in, in whatever way I can. Currently, I have the privilege and opportunity of serving here at Moody at my alma mater, and I'm with them for the next two years. And so I get to work as a flight instructor and also as a production mechanic uh, with Moody. After that, my wife and I are looking at serving somewhere overseas. I was really encouraged by some of the things that I got to go through, the Bible training, the maintenance portion, before we get to flight. The Moody kind of forces you to, to take pride in what you do and to uh, do it well and do it with excellence. Moody Aviation starts from ground zero to train you towards mission flying. From stem to stern, it is guided and geared towards training you to be able to serve cross-culturally. The Moody program is definitely for someone who has a heart to serve and the drive and the desire to do that in a professional manner and to put in the effort and the, to pay the costs of what it's going to take to really do this job well. Moody exists to train missionary pilots. That's, that's why we're here. Those are the first responders to the villages. Those are the ones that bring aid, aid them out. Those are the ones that are the lifeline, that are the communication to the outside world from those villages. As we look out to the world around us, we don't see that missionary aviation is going to disappear very soon at all. I'm looking forward to just seeing how these students go on to serve. It's been amazing to see where some of them have already ended up and to know that I've been a part of them getting there. I know there is a lot to be done because there's still a lot of places that need the help that we're able to give. So Moody Aviation's sole purpose is to simply make sure that the gospel is available to everyone in the world. Currently our students are serving in over 60 different locations around the world with different mission agencies such as the ones you've seen in the video so far like Mission Aviation Fellowship, uh, JARS, Ethnos 360, and these are just some of the 110 that we partner with, that we send our students out with around the world. Moody Aviation was started in 1946 and we are celebrating our 78th anniversary this year. So we've been equipping uh, missionary aviators for many, many years. And the biggest thing that you guys can do for us is prayer, obviously, prayer and partnership. Uh, we can't do it without our ministry partners, and we can't do it without people in churches praying for our ministry. As you heard some of the students say, it's a very intensive program. Not everybody makes it through, um, and it's meant to be that way because where these pilots and mechanics are going to serve are very difficult and challenging places. So, again, I thank you so much for having me here today. There's so much more to talk about. If you want to come to the coffee afterwards, I'm more than happy to share more and, 
answer any questions you may all have. Thank you so much. I think it's impressive that you have the thorough Bible study in your program, but I understand why, because it makes a lot of sense for them, because their heart's got to be into this, this is such a special ministry. So thank you for sharing that. We will have a free will offering basket in the back of the church um, for you to contribute as your heart feels and um, can do. But for right now, we will do our sermon hymn, number 656, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. We will now receive your offering. Please stand as you are able for our offertory prayer. It's verse number four. Before you, Lord, we bow.
May the blessing of God <clears throat> who provides for us, journeys with us, and unifies us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending him is God be with you. Again, we have fellowship time and an opportunity to talk more with Curtis about the Moody Aviation Program. Hymn number 536. Thank you. 